Hey booktube, it's Jackie. How's it going? If you're new to me, it's the first time you're seeing my face. Hello, what's up? My name's Jackie. I sit on my floor and I talk about books. So I hope that's why you're here because that's what's going to be happening today. If you're not new to me, thank you for always tuning in and the continued support. I really do appreciate it. So today for you, I have my weekly wrap up. This is from August 28th through September 3rd and all my reading shenanigans in between. And although I did not read a great deal this week, I did enjoy immensely what I did read this week. So without further ado, grab yourself a drink, have yourself a seat, and let's get talking some books. All right. So this week, oh, this week was fun. This week was a doozy. And this is why, because this is what I started with this week. <laughs> the fifth installment of the Throne of Glass series, Empire Storms by Sarah J. Mass. This is my first completed read of the week. And boy, was it a way to start a week off. Not even gonna lie about it. I did a complete reading vlog of this book and I will link it in the down box below along with a little card here in the corner so you guys can check out my reading experience and see all the reactions of this book. However, I did not get my reactions towards the end of this book because I did finish it while at a softball game. Um, and I did get to participate in the live show for this as well. I will link it down below. I am not in the first half of it because I had to come in late because of that said softball game. It ran over, but I was able to make the tail end. And so you will get to see me at the end of it if you stick through the entire live show. So I will link both of those videos down below for you guys. And then my vlog will be in the corner. All right. So I am reading this book because of the SJM read along hosted by Jen over the book refuge and August installment was Empire of Storms and I wanted to make sure that I read it very close to the live show so I was up to snuff I guess you could say for lack of a better word um on all the goodies that was in this book and this thing did not fucking disappoint. Sarah J Mass never disappoints. I mean I don't even know why I need to say that. She she's amazing and this book is no exception. There are so many moving pieces in this book. It's it's insane. It is a living chessboard and you have piece after piece after piece after actually no chess is not really the game I compare this to risk if you ever played risk where you have to set up your armies and move them around that's exactly what this book is it is a book version of risk and it is epic and it is awesome and we get to see so many intimate moments with all of our favorite characters and we get to learn more about some of our favorite characters aka Manon Manon fucking loses her shit in this and becomes the ultimate badass. I mean, I already knew this bitch was a badass, but she'd be the queen on that one. Yep, she, she, <sighs> that was awesome. And I did get that reaction in that vlog. So I was super pumped about that. That was one of the coolest fucking scenes in this book. Oh, it was so good. And if you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. If you have not read this book, go read the four previous installments so you can read this book and then you'll know the moment I'm fucking talking about because I can't talk a lot about what's going in, what's going on in this book um, in great detail because it is the fifth installment in this series and it is definitely the book where all of our pieces are starting to come in to place. They're being placed where they need to for this big war. Battle lines are being drawn. Sides are being chosen and risks are being taken choices are being made relationships are forming relationships are ending major questions are being left open I mean there's so many unanswered questions in this book that I did not feel comfortable leaving this book where I had to leave it because I had to if I had my way I would have had more I would have a little bit more resolutions but I didn't and that is literally making me sit on pins and needles and I said this in my vlog that I do not envy the people who read these books when they first originally came out because from what I understand after this book was released the next installment of the series was almost a year two years and it doesn't really answer a lot of the questions because Sarah wanted to make us wait even more and with the cliffhangers in literally all of our favorite characters lives I do not envy the people who read this when they originally came out but you guys are rock stars I could not have done that because I only have to wait a month maybe two months to really find out some of those answers so yeah this this thing oh you want to talk about cliffhanger this whole book is a goddamn cliffhanger but in this book I did get my scene 
We got a lot of super sexy fun times in this, more than this entire series combined. I mean, we got a lot of it, and I was down for all of it. Oh, so many relationships are starting to solidify, and it is awesome, and there's some that I didn't even see coming, and I love this. I want them. I need them. Why are they ending the way that they are ending? I don't know, but that better get fixed because I'm not happy. Uh, Lorcan in a lead. There you go. That, mm -mm, no, that needs to happen. It needs to get back to being happy because I like that couple. I think they were cute. And I personally like Lor Lorcan. I, I like him even though he's kind of a douchebag. Um, I, I do. I, I like him a lot. I like him a lot. And Dorian in this, oh, Dorian brought it. If this was the Dorian that I saw in Throne of Glass, please, K all the fuck who. Oh my god, I would have chosen Dorian right off the top if this was the Dorian I saw because he was stunning. Mm. Oh my god. I was not happy when he was under control of the vlog, but if being under control of the vlog created this guy, I'm gonna need a minute. Because that shit was sweet. Oh, that was amazing. So good. Now, <sighs> there are a few things about this book that I realized. In this book, we do find out a very, very big reveal. And I am not happy about it. So I'm really hoping that we can figure out a way... <laughs> That, that reveal does not have to come to fruition because I don't think my heart can take it. I, I don't. But I also noticed something about Sarah J. Mass's writing, and it really, really shows in this installment. Sarah J. Mass writes badass female characters. They are strong, they are smart, they are quick, they are spunky, they are they are kick-ass, and I love them. But what I have noticed is that all of her female characters kind of have the same trait. They don't want any help. They don't like asking for help and they don't like accepting help. And I'm not just talking about Island. Lysandra, Manon, Alid, and Island, all four of these main female characters, and Maeve, we're not even include her in that. All five, all five of these female characters have displayed at some point in time in this book a moment where they say, I don't need you. They might not say those exact words, but that the, their actions are stating, I don't need your help. I'm going to do this myself. And the person they're talking to is this badass male who, when they first came into the book, was a badass, was strong, was kick-ass, and we love them. And now in this book, I feel like some of the males have taken a step back, and I don't know why. I don't know if they're taking a step back so they can let their female counterparts shine. Or if Sarah is not writing them as strong as she originally wrote them in the beginning. Because Sarah J. Mass writes her female characters super kick-ass. She also writes her men really fucking kick-ass. She has got some strong-ass motherfuckers in these books, okay? Rowan is amazing. Lorcan's power is dope as okay he's got this like death power and it's stupid cool okay stupid cool dorian's powers are starting to be like i don't even know how to describe his powers they are like just all over the fucking place with awesomeness but i feel like she is shining on the females more than she is on the males specifically in this novel and i don't know why and i'm really hoping that in the future installments she brings the male's strength back and has it equal because her women are fucking awesome. And I think that's great. Kudos. I love that. Go girl power the whole nine yards. Okay. But I like strong men. I like the strong male character she wrote. That's why I fell in love with Rowan in the first place. That's why I liked 
Kale in the first place. And then, you know, he went and did his stupid shit. It's why I like Lorcan. It's why I like Fenris. It's why I like Gabrielle. It's why I like Dorian. It's why I like Aiden. Because they are badass men. And I want them to be the badass again. I don't want them to be overshined. Or overshown, however you say it. So that was the one thing I noticed of clear as day in this book. And it was the only thing that kind of unsettled me because I don't know why she's doing it. And with Sarah J. Mass, from what I've learned in reading her books, you cannot assume a goddamn thing. So <laughs> I'm just going to go in blind and hope that, you know, my men get their shining moment again. Um, because she, they're still strong. The way she's writing, they are still, they're still super strong. It just seems that they're taking a back seat to her females. And I don't know if it was just this book or if that's going to be the continuation with the rest of the series. So I'm a little, I don't know. I don't know what to, I don't know how to feel about that because I want to love this strength that she's showing with the females, but I don't want her to forget about these strong ass males because I like them. I, you have, you are rocking your girls. Let's rock your boys. Like let's rock them together and we'll just all be fucking strong, badass people all over the place. And it'll be great awesome so yeah that was my only concern with really this installment um but I saw it clear as day in this one more than any others so yeah but this thing was a trip I loved it I loved it and I am not happy where it ended I am not okay and I am going to sit very patiently as well as I can till I can pick up the next installment because September's installment for SJM is not thrown a glass. We are going back into Akatar. So I have to wait. I have to wait to find out. And she has to stay where she's at currently. And Rowan <laughs> and Lorcan. Yeah, I have to wait. I'm not comfy with it. So yeah. So that was my first read of this week. The next book I picked up this week and completed was not as intense as <laughs> Empire Storms. It was, it was a good time though. And it is Sexy by J.A. Huss. Uh, this is a standalone and this is an exotic male dancer romance um, with the hate to love trope. There is also a workplace romance and we have dubious consent and suicide of a parent off page. And then something that I don't know if this is a thing if it is, let me know the correct terminology, but I'm just coining it as the daisy technique, daisy trope. And what I refer to that as is, remember you're a little girl and you hold the flower, he likes me, he likes me not, he likes me, he likes me not, and then the last petal is what actually is. I call that the daisy trope. And this book has that. So if that's another title of a trope, please let me know. And I will call it the correct thing, but that's just how I felt it reminded me of. So this book, we follow Fletcher Novak and Tiffany Preston, or AKA Tiffy, that's what they call her in the book. Fletcher is a stripper in a male entertainment show at a hotel in Tahoe. And Tiffy is the daughter of the owner of the hotel that the male exotic dancer show is a part of. And the male exotic dancer show is very similar to like a Thunder Down Under. They call it the Mountain Men show, but it's very similar like Magic Mike, Thunder Down Under, all those male strip club, male entertainment choreographed dances it's not just a male stripper it is choreographed dances with characters and yes so like a full monty sort of thing um tiffy believes that fletch is abusing his status as the lead of the show to seduce women and have multiple one night stands so he's he's not doing anything illegal but he's just doing something morally irrehensible in her eyes and she has had enough of it so she plants herself in the audience and Fletcher notices her and tries to make her one of his girls. And in the heat of that moment, her room number is shouted out to him and he goes up to her room after the show is over, which was originally the whole plan in the first place because it was a setup. And Fletcher learns this very, very quickly that this was a whole setup to try to fire him. And since he legally has not done anything wrong, has not broken his contract, he manipulates the situation to get out of it. But Tiffy just can't let a sleeping dog lie. So the next day she goes and finds him. And then of course, <laughs> chaos ensues from that. And they end up sleeping together. And this is where our workplace romance, hate to love relationship really kicks off. Um, 
a deal is struck between Fletcher Novak and Tiffy Preston because she doesn't want to disappoint her father and Fletcher does not want to lose his job. So he's like, look, I'll make you a deal because Fletcher is also a matchmaker on the side. I will teach you to be sexy for the guy that you want to impress, which happens to be Tiffy's boss. And you will stop fucking hounding me about my job and you will leave me the fuck alone. Deal is struck and then chaos ensues. What worked about this book? The sex scenes were fantastic. The sex scenes really, really helped this book. I mean, this book is about a guy teaching a girl to be sexy. So you gotta have the sexy scenes. And all the sexy scenes were definitely their training sessions and they were intense and they were awesome. And I thoroughly enjoyed every single one of them. I had a good time with every single one of those scenes. I did not feel uncomfortable during any of them. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the original premise of this of this book. Um, you know, boss sleeps with employee, makes a deal, kind of favors on both sides. I really liked this premise and how it was laid out. I thought it was an interesting concept. And then there was this huge big twist with Fletcher because there is this notion throughout the entire book that Fletcher just really isn't being super honest. And you learn this very early on when Tiffy confronts him and says, everything you're saying is fake. You are a fake person. This is all fake. Everything you're saying that I'm pretty, you're just doing this to get what you want. And he basically looks at her and says, I'm saying you're pretty because you're pretty. I'm saying I want to fuck you because I want to fuck you. I don't necessarily want to do it a bunch, but I'm not lying to you. He's just not giving the entirety of the truth. He's saying just enough to be truthful, to get what he wants, but he's not giving the girl the whole truth so she won't just understand that, hey, this is a one-time thing. He really doesn't feel anything for me. But in this moment, he does. So it's a very fine line of truth that Fletcher Novak has given. And he does this throughout the entirety of the book. And you learn that very early on, which makes for their conversations and their sexy times and just the dialogue between them really, really muddled, which works for this book, but it doesn't work for this book because it works because this is exactly how Tiffy is feeling about Fletcher the entirety of the book. He, she's fucking confused. She's confused. Does he really like me? Does he not like me? He likes me. He doesn't like me. Here's where the daisy technique comes in because of the dialogue being so freaking muddled. The daisy trope. He likes me, he likes me not. He likes me, he likes me not. He's reacting to me being sexy, but he's saying that he's telling me what to do. So is it, is he really reacting or is he just reacting like how someone's supposed to react when somebody does this so I know that I'm doing it right? Really, really confusing. And it works for the book because it makes you feel like Tiffy and it puts you in her position. But at the same time, it's kind of hard to track for a while and you get lost in it in of yourself and it gets kind of annoying after a while. You're just like, can you just be clear for once in this book? That'd be fan-fucking-tastic. Great, thanks, appreciate it. Um, what didn't work besides that muddling, um, because it's kind of a, it does but it doesn't, is Tiffany's backstory. We learn her backstory and you're just like, really? Okay, it explains a lot of why Tiffy is the way that she is. But at the same time, you're like, really? You're... You realize that was a movie that, st that starred Richard Gere and What's-Her-Face from Pretty Woman. Like, it's Pretty Woman. Really? All right. Cool. I can't think of that actress's name. That's going to bug me now. <laughs> that is going to bug me so bad. <laughs> Julie Roberts. It is a, it is literally a movie starring Richard Gere and Julie Roberts called Pretty Woman. That's her backstory. And it's like, really? Except she's the product of said backstory. And it just kind of comes out of left field. And you're like, what the fuck is that? What? And then it's never mentioned again. It's dropped once. And then you're like, what? What am I supposed to do with this? It just, I think it was a stretch for that one. Um, and then we have another stretch on Fletcher's side. We have a, like a magic Mike story 
arc. And I'm like, okay. The whole first part of this book was completely original. I enjoyed it. And now you're pulling from classic cinema? Like, what are we doing here? What, 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 are, you, what are you doing? I, are you trying to make a tie-in? I didn't really appreciate that. But for the book, it made sense. I just didn't really like it. I thought it was kind of, it cheapened the story for me. It, it definitely did. Um, the language that Fletcher uses. Now, here is where the muddling comes back into play. You see, Fletcher's been playing a character this entire of this book. And so when he's saying these things, it's a little disrespectful because he's basically saying girls that go to male entertainment shows are easy, slutty, and cheap. And as a female who's been to those things, uh, fuck you. All right, fuck you. But when I find out who Fletcher is at the end, it completely makes sense. So he has this degrading kind of attitude towards women who go and see these male entertainment shows but then you find out why and it makes sense but it, the initial revelation of that you're kind of like you're a dick and I don't like you anymore I stopped liking him for a while after that statement and it's just kind of like really man you're a dick why'd you gotta do that and there is this there is this tendency of what I would call gaslighting, but it's during the training sessions. And again, this falls under that muddled language. This muddled language literally messes with the entire book. He would look at Tiffy and say, look, you want me. I know you do. And I'm here. So do it. Get on your knees and do what you want to do. And previous monologue, inner monologues have told us that she wants to do this, but now he's calling her out on her shit. But at the same time, they're in their training sessions. So is he talking to her to convince her to do it? Or is he just calling her on her bullshit? Very muddled, not really cl clear and concise. So it was definitely this one. If you read it, you, you have to to pay attention. And I listened to it on audiobook. Um, so I think maybe physically reading it, it might be a little different because you're more like, you know, zoned in. Um, so audiobook, I feel like maybe that's why some of, it, some of this stuff was getting so muddled and I was just kind of confused most of the time. But I was confused the way I feel like Tiffany was confused. So it worked. Um, the sex scenes in this, I gave two chili peppers. There was very graphic language and that was very nice. And then the language during the training sessions was, uh, quite nice too. And I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> I loved it. I liked it. Um, the scenes were very, very, very nice. I very much enjoyed it. So all in all, I gave this book a three star. Yeah. Three stars, right? Yeah, I did. And then the last book I started but I have not completed is Under the Lights by Abby Glines. This is the second installment to the Field Party series. And I have just, um, I'm only maybe like 25% of the way through. And so far it is pretty good. We follow Willa, Gunner, and Brady. Gunner and Brady have made their appearance in the first installment. Brady was um, the cousin of Maggie. Maggie. And now it is his turn. And Gunner and Brady were best friends when they were small children. Gunner is um, kind of the founding, the founders of the city. He is his, that is his lineage. And so he is Mr. Richie Rich. He gets whatever he wants, but he has some tortured past as well. And Brady and him used to be best friends. And Willa was the granddaughter of Gunner's made. She was the help's granddaughter. It's emphasized quite a lot. And as small children, they were all friends. And then they started to develop a crush on each other. Willa chose Brady and Gunner really loved Willa and Brady never really paid attention to her. So we have this little triangle going and then Willa leaves for a reason that we have not been exposed to yet. We just know she leaves and then she has come back and all of these old feelings are starting to come back except now Brady sees Willa as grown up. She's beautiful. She's stunning. And he said, and he 
wants to be something more because Brady's the nice guy and he thinks Gunner's kind of a tool and Gunner sees Willa and remembers, you know, she was my best friend. She, she was real with me and starts to develop those feelings again for her. And Willa is just kind of like, I don't know what to fucking do. So that's where I'm at right now with this book. I'm having a great time with it. It's, it's different than the first one. Um, the level, the, the drama, um, I haven't gotten that like bead of hope through there yet, but I'm only about 25% of the way through so far. So, but that's what I read this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you guys all soon with another video. I will link my Empire Storms vlog down below and the live show as well. So please go and check those out and I will see you guys all soon.